No, don't stop till you get enough. And you haven't had enough? <laughs> no way. No way. It's your boy Nick, and I'm back with another video, baby. And if this is your first time on my channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button because that will help me out a lot, you know what I'm saying? And in today's video, you know what I'm saying, we will be reacting to Michael Jackson, but who invented the moonwalk? And here's a hint it's not Michael Jackson. Hmm. Always known that, um, he didn't invent it, but he kind of enhanced it, took that dance, and put it on the global stage and just made it famous. That's what I know about the moonwalk and what Michael Jackson has done for the moonwalk. But let's just get straight into the video, you know what I'm saying? Let the detail explain it to us, man. Let's get it. Anniversary of man's first landing on the moon. Why not also commemorate the first time Michael Jackson landed his signature move, the moonwalk? It was over 35 years ago, on May 16, 1983, that Jackson shimmied backwards across the stage at Motown 25's taping. A few scant seconds of showmanship that may have marked the critical turning point from him being a superstar to being the superstar of his era. Mm -hmm. But to believe that Jackson invented the moonwalk is like believing that Kylie Jenner invented hair braiding. <laughs> Welcome to the detail, and in this video we are investigating the origins of the moonwalk and how it evolved over time, as well as the cultural impact of Michael Jackson's famous first televised backslide that shook the world all those years ago. The but first, slide. make sure to give us a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Also check out our MJ store, we've got loads of great designs, we ship worldwide, now. Trying to determine the exact creator of the moonwalk dance is like trying to pin the invention of rock and roll to one artist. It is, as the writer Shauna Freeman has said, the product of more than 70 years of dance evolution. Cab Calloway liked to say that he'd been doing pretty much the same moves since the 1930s. The earliest footage that portrays someone doing something nearly identical to Jackson's fancy footwork belongs to the dancer Bill Bailey from 1955. But, if you want to know where Jackson got it, the historical guesswork can come to an end, and the answer can be summed up in one word, Shalimar. No, it wasn't Jodie Watley who was taking that early 80s soul trio trips to the moon. It was the group's designated dancer, Jeffrey Daniel, a former solid gold performer who was renowned in the R&B dance community, who attracted attention to what was referred to the backslide before it was taught to Michael. And apparently Jackson held the move in his back pocket for months or years before he decided the Motown special was the place to bust it out. Naturally, there were some variations that go into the myth-making around what happened at that March 25th, 1983 taping. Everything that you saw him do, he made it up on the spot, Jermaine Jackson said. A statement that gives Michael far more credit for spontaneous genius than he gave himself. Latoya's version gives credit where credit is due. The moonwalk was a dance that the kids were doing in the streets, she said. And Michael came along later, and he had a guy by the name of Jeffrey Daniel teach him the move. And when he did it, everybody saw it, and just thought it was the most wonderful thing they'd ever seen, not really knowing that it was a dance that was already out there. Michael was a little stingy with the credit in his autobiography, although he was quite open to the fact that his key move at the fateful taping of Motown 25, Yesterday, Today and Forever, which was aired two months later, was not his own innovation. I'd been practicing the moonwalk for some time, he wrote in his 1988 memoir, which tellingly was called Moonwalker. And it dawned me in our kitchen, on the night before the taping, that I would finally do the moonwalk in public, on oh, Motown 25. So now, the moonwalk was already on the streets by this time, but I enhanced it a little when I did it. It was born as a breakdance step, a popping type thing that black kids had created dancing on the street corners in the ghetto. So I said, this is my chance to do it, and I did it. These three kids taught me to do it. They gave me the basics, and I had been doing it a lot in private. I had practiced it together with certain other steps. All I was really sure of 
was that on the bridge to Billie Jean, I was going to walk backwards and forwards at the same time, like walking on the moon. The three kids to whom Jackson alluded to was apparently Daniel and his companions, Casper and Cooley. Daniel was a seasoned professional who was actually three years older than Jackson, who was then 24. So you can judge for yourself whether Jackson was crediting kids as a term of endearment or a deflection meant to bolster his street cred. Jackson had been a fan of Daniel's. He used to watch me dance on Soul Train, Daniel recalled on a TV interview. I had no idea back then when I was watching the Jackson 5 that they were watching me. In 1980, Shalomar were doing a run at Disneyland and people were making a fuss about my dancing. So Michael brought his little sister Janet. Daniel recalled in a TV interview, backstage they met for the first time. And that began a friendship that would lead not only to the moonwalk lessons, but also the co choreography credit for Daniel on the bad and smooth criminal music videos. The best existing footage of Daniel doing the moonwalk comes from a 1982 Top of the Pops appearance that wowed the UK. Daniel does not take credit for inventing the dance, saying that it actually emerged from the developing popping and locking style, which emphasised sudden halts and pauses in a performance over a sheer fluidity of motion. In the mid 80s, shortly after Jackson made it the rage, one of the most legendary black entertainers of the first half of the 20th century, Cab Calloway, was reported to have gone into the move while performing in Manhattan. According to a 1985 article in The Crisis, asked if his teenage son had taught him the move, Calloway said, shoot, we did that back in the 30s, only it was called the buzz back then. Footage of some of Calloway's astonishing footwork from the 1930s shows a lot of moves that would definitely count as part of the evolution that led to the popping and locking style. Perhaps the oddest thing about Jackson's Motown 25 performance is that his first reaction at the conclusion of his appearance was to feel insecure about it. We worked with him in 1980, but he didn't do the moonwalk publicly until 1983, Daniel remembered in Time magazine after Jackson's death. And after he did it, he asked me, how was it? And I said, why did you wait so long? He said, well, it still didn't come out right. I'm like, huh? This is the performance that totally blew everyone away. And he said something didn't come out right. Whatever was going on in his mind, we would never know it. We all know that it was a mind-blowing performance and it just took him to another level. In his autobiography, Jackson went into detail about the reasons for his odd dissatisfaction with the Motown 25 performance, which apparently didn't have anything to do with the moonwalk. I just remember opening my eyes at the end and seeing a sea of people standing up and applauding, he said. And I felt so many conflicting emotions. I knew I had done my best and felt good, so good. But at the same time, I felt really disappointed in myself. I had planned to do this one really long spin and then stop on my toes, suspended for a moment. Yeah, and that was another thing. He he did not like this performance that he did, even though it was one of the greatest performances, one of the greatest performances of all time. He didn't like the fact that he stood on top. He, he wanted to stay on top of his toes a little bit longer, but... He came down too quick, and that's what Michael was upset about. But it was still a great performance, but as we all know, Michael is a perfectionist, you know. So, you know. Stay on my toes for as long as I wanted. I did the spin, and I landed on one toe. I wanted to just stay there, just freeze there, but it didn't work as quite as I'd imagined. When I got backstage, the, the people back there were congratulating me, and I was still disappointed about the spin. I had been concentrating so hard, and I'm such a perfectionist. At the same time, I knew it was one of the happiest moments of my life. Although he never forgot that insecurity about his performance of Billie Jean, he had some good help getting over it. The day after it aired in 1983, Fred Astaire called me on the phone, Jackson wrote in Moonwalker. He said, You're a hell of a mover, man. You really put them on their asses last night. You're an angry dancer. I'm the same way. I used to do the same thing with my cane. I had met him once or twice in the past, but this was the first time he had ever called me. It was the greatest compliment I had ever received in my life, and the only one I had ever wanted to believe. Later he invited me to his house, and there were more compliments from him until I really blushed. He went over my Billie Jean performance step by step, and the great choreographer, Hermes Pan, who had choreographed Fred Astaire's dance moves in the movies, came over and I showed them both the moonwalk. Thank you for watching 
detail. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe for more like this one. Also, check out our MJ store. We've got loads of great designs. We ship worldwide. Also, check out our MJ store. We've got... All right, all right. So, we know that he didn't invent the moonwalk. To be honest, we don't really know who really invented that move. All we know is, is that this move has been recycled over the years. And, it's, it, and it has different names for it as well, like the backslide. You know what I'm saying? The original name for the moonwalk was the backslide. But uh, that's, that's interesting. But I don't think we will ever know who invented like that move. You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments how y'all feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Michael took the move that he seen little kids doing on the street. And he put it on the global stage, like I said in the beginning of the video. You know what I'm saying? He took what the kids did and put it on the global stage and just made it famous. You know what I'm saying? But that's the end of this video. You know what I'm saying? I want to make it too long, man. And before you guys leave, man, if you stay with me through the whole video, I really do appreciate that, man. You know what I'm saying? And for the newcomers, man, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to click that bell so you can be notified when I do make new videos. You know what I'm saying? But I've been your boy Nick, and I'll see you in the next video, bruh. Peace.